Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, here with me is my, my sister, and we're going to be discussing coronavirus and the mental impact that will have on people during this pandemic. So, uh, would you introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Elizabeth Nikram. I'm a medical doctor and I have a Master's of Medicine in Psychiatry. I practice at the Georgian Public Hospital. So right now, um, there's a tremendous amount of, 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 of mental impact on, on the society because of what is going on with this pandemic. Could you discuss a little bit about, about this impact and, 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 and as well as social isolation that is causing? So as we were saying earlier in casual conversation, people are going to be a lot more stressed and the stress will manifest itself as depression and anxiety. So we have all felt sad before and we have all felt anxious before so we know what those, what those emotions are like. But now it's a time that people should watch out and people should really uh, be vigilant to see when themselves and their family members it's moving from a normal reaction to an abnormal situation from that place to one which symbolizes mental illness. You know about anxiety and depression. How do you feel when you're sad? Well, you, you feel a sense of hopelessness and, uh, and helplessness. So there is changes in mood, your mood gets low, you lose interest in the activities that you, you normally enjoy, you, do, you can have changes in appetite and changes in, in your sleep patterns, so you can either sleep more or sleep less, or you can eat more or eat less. But prior to, to the coronavirus, um, these things were present and prevalent in society. So how can we distinguish uh, its effect on us then as opposed to this this pandemic happening and it and the stress is happening now how can we differentiate the stress caused by this pandemic so the stress caused by the pandemic will be time specific occurring after the pandemic has revealed itself and also our worries and our our ruminative thoughts will be based on people dying and 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 the risk of people that we love dying and the risk of us dying anxiety symptoms which people would like to know everybody knows what anxious symptoms are but to, you, you need to define certain things on the list like I, I bet a lot of people use the word hopeless but do you really know what hopeless means? it means that you feel like your situation wouldn't change and it can only get worse from here and anxious symptoms everybody we're familiar with because we've all went into strange situations where we feel apprehensive or, or we worry that something can go wrong and so we can have nervousness we can have trembling we can have racing thoughts we can have um, fast speech now everybody will can experience symptoms of anxiety and symptoms of depression what I think your public what your viewers need to know is how to know when they're having a, a problem that that they will need medical intervention for. So usually when the symptoms are they're, they, they, they're ex excessive, like they're present on you and you feel burdened with them for a long period of time, and when they interfere with your routine. So, so lots of us are stressed out at different times and we're still able to get up and take a bath and, and have a meal and interact with our family and go about our daily chores. But once these symptoms begin to interfere with your routine and they either make you stay in bed longer or they make you want to just sit in a chair and just uh, wallow and, and, and worry about what is going to happen, then there is definitely something wrong and you should get some help. And so since we answered the fact of, of um, anxiety and what it is, what, what are the coping mechanisms now? The, how, can we, how can we deal with this? Because, I mean, going to the, to the hospital at this point in time, a lot of people are afraid to do so uh, at, because they're at maybe they would be at risk at contracting the coronavirus. So how can we, is there a, 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 not a medical, not a tablet way, but a, a, a behavioral way um, that we could, we could learn, that we could apply in our daily lives so that we can help alleviate these symptoms uh, as it is right now? Absolutely. So, 
the WHO has some very specific recommendations and it's worth the read to go onto their website and check out what information they have to offer. Um, some recommendations that they, they offer to, to help alleviate the stress is that you manage your information, how you receive information. Because lots of people, they will they will have their radios or their television on and they look for updates throughout the entire day. And so they're in a high tension state throughout the entire day. So the first thing is that uh, you, you need to, to limit when you're exposed to updates. One other very important thing is to to trust the source that you're receiving information from. So I know lots of people have lots to say about coronavirus, how you can get it and how you can treat it. Some people like to say about fever grass. So, so you, you need to, to find a trusted source and get information only from that source. Other things you can do is that what psychologists have found when with, with stress and its impact the, the people who, who usually feel stressed or feel overwhelmed by, by what feelings they're having are the people that feel like they don't have any control. So lots of people are walking around and they're feeling like, oh my god, if I only breathe the air that, that, that somebody else breathed, I can, I can find contact with coronavirus and I can die. And, and so, so at this time, it's important to empower yourself with information on how you can protect yourself. So, so I see lots of people wearing masks, but, but the mask wouldn't help you unless you know how, what's the proper way to use the mask. So you're supposed to sanitize your hands for 20 seconds and then put on your mask. And if you need to touch your mask, you have to sanitize your hands and then you can't touch your face. You, you're, you're not, you're supposed to practice social distancing. You're supposed to be at least six feet away from another person. You're supposed to wash your hands frequently. So. One very important thing that you can do at this time is to empower yourself with information and how you can prevent transmission. And that's where your power lies. But wouldn't that in itself, because the news of the days isn't really all of the positive at the moment, even the legitimate news, which is, uh, I think the death toll was at over a million. Uh, not a death toll, but the person's contracting disease was over a million, and the death toll itself was over 100,000. So that those news in itself is enough to to put you in a state of, of greater anxiety, even legitimate news. So how, how else can they deal with it other than, than, than just uh, getting reliable information from the World Health Organization or the Center for Disease Control? So, so in addition to practicing preventative techniques, like what I told you just now, with social distancing and washing your hands and using face masks, when you should and if you do choose to use your music properly there are other things that people can do like uh, people who are, are very overwhelmed we, we, we teach them something called mindfulness have you ever heard about mindfulness? no I haven't heard of it so mindfulness is the, the technique of paying attention to the present moment in a, a conscious purposeful way so, so we're sitting here and even though we're all uh, all human beings, when they make up their mind to think about one thing, they will get distracted by, by other thoughts. And for the most part, we're able to dismiss those, those other thoughts. Now, when the other thoughts are worry about what bad things can happen, then there is a way to just sit and train yourself to just think about how I'm sitting here, how I'm breathing, the noises around me, and try to distract yourself from from the, the the awful thoughts, even if they're it's it's worry about what's happening and it's a real worry, thinking about it all the time will not help you to to feel better. Anxiety is really important because it prompts us to do something about what's happening and it prompts us to take action so that we can we can protect ourselves. But if you're always worried, then you your your sympathetic nervous system is always activated. Your muscles are always tense. Your brain is always working. So, so you need to find a way to slow yourself down. Okay. And, um, I mean, this is a jump from, from, from the topic. But uh, the stress normally, I think, I think stress activates a lot of things, like, um, like for example, domestic abuse. 
uh, a, a person of domestic abuse, they would get abused more if their if their spouse, who is the abuser, uh, is stressed out more. You think we're gonna have a rise in the level of abuse? Definitely. There is a news article today that says that there is a there are more cases that have been reported, and so so, so I am in by no means uh, prepared to speak about that. But what limited information I know is that if you combine loss of job with increased need for money because uh, uh, things in the shops, the prices have raised, children are no longer at school, so routine is disrupted and everybody is confined within the home. Plus, now, if people are not managing their thoughts and managing their information sources, then stress will definitely rise. And if when people are, are, are sad or are anxious, one thing that comes along with it is irritability. And irritability is this propensity to get to get upset and to get angry and so so those people who have had poorly controlled regulation of emotion before they will experience even greater loss of control now because it will be even more overwhelming for them i guess the, the same will go for uh, those with suicidal thoughts and ideation yes that, that was a question that was posed i don't know if you, you looked at the, the interview with me and dr frank anthony and up to date. But that was a question that they, they posed if, if I if we anticipated the suicide rate would go up. Well we hope that it wouldn't. But definitely one of the things that come along with depression is suicidal thoughts. And if people are away from their usually their usual support systems that keep them in check mm -hmm. and their usual methods of distraction like work and church and so forth that will help their mind feel at ease, then yes, they can become overwhelmed with their suicidal ideations. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Liz, for having this discussion with me. Um, we're going to continue more in discuss discussions. If you guys are interested, um, you could stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, please, subscribe, please do so and leave a like. And thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah. Bye -bye. Is there anything